this is the first episode of a new series I'm going to be doing on handling credit card transactions and purchases on your web application. So I'm going to be mostly using PayPal, especially at the beginning here, because I want to start off with the simpler solutions and then go into more complex solutions further on in this series. So the application that we're working with here is just a basic e-commerce app where we have a list of products and we can add some products to our cart. So we have multiple products in our cart here, but what I want to do is get this checkout link working. Right now it does nothing. You can click it, it just brings you back to the cart. What I want to do here is just hand this off to PayPal so where it handles the processing of the credit card and everything, the transaction, for us so we don't have to worry about it. Since we'll be working with PayPal in this series, I'm going to be working in the PayPal sandbox. This is a special designated area for developers for testing their application without having to worry about real transactions and passing money around. So if you haven't already, go to developer.paypal.com and just click sign up now. Even if you have a real PayPal account, you have to create a new one for this developer area. And then once you do, just log in here. And once you're logged in, you should see a page like this. Um, the first thing you want to do is just create a pre-configured buyer or seller account. We'll just create a seller account here. I'll just call it seller. And then we'll just keep our password here so uh, we can use that later on when we need to log in. Just create this account. And now we have a test business account set up and we could just choose enter sandbox test site to enter uh, the PayPal site in the sandbox for this one account. And this brings up a new window where we can log in to that test account and use that same password which was provided when we created the pre-configured account. And then here we are logged into the PayPal sandbox, which should look pretty familiar to you if you have a PayPal account. Uh, we could just click the Merchant Services tab, which is usually where we want to go. But this is where things can start to get confusing because PayPal has so many different services it offers. It's kind of like, okay, which one do I want and which will be right for my site? So hopefully uh, this series will walk you through some of the different options and then we can, uh, you can kind of choose depending on what the application needs. As I mentioned in this series, we want to start simple. So I'm just going to go with the first option here, Website Payment Standard. And this is a, pretty much as simple as you can get where you're just passing in a URL with all the order information to PayPal. It handles the gathering the user's information, uh, handling the credit card transaction, and then it just returns to your application. So what we want here is option number three, custom integration. And this is really where we're just going to handle the URL that we pass into PayPal. So if we click on this link here, you can see here this will just show us some of the variables which we can pass in to customize how our order takes place. Now some of the important ones that we want to pay attention to are these shopping cart variables, especially the ones down here for third-party shopping carts because really our application, our Rails application is considered a third-party shopping cart and then we'll just pass in the information for each of the line items in that cart, such as these variables here. Okay, so going back to our application, what we want to do is change this checkout link so it goes to PayPal and passes in all the necessary variables. And here's what the code for that cart page looks like. And as you can see, we have our checkout link down here and it currently goes nowhere. So we want to go to our PayPal URL. Well, let's put all this logic inside of our cart because that's where all most of the attributes are held. So we could just say a uh, cart PayPal URL and then we can, um, let's pass in a return path. So when the user completes their order, they can just return to our site. Let's say our products URL. Okay, and inside of our cart model, this is where we want to um, generate that PayPal method. So I'll just paste in some code here to do that. Here's that PayPal URL method. And really this is just going to return the PayPal's URL and pass in all the necessary variables to it. So our business is the seller's email address um, that we signed up in for our test account. Um, basically this is just saying this is a cart and these are all the line items inside of that cart with the appropriate amounts and quantities and so on. And then we're just generating the URL for that. And notice I'm going to the sandbox version of PayPal. And of course, once you're in production and deploying this and done testing, just go to the normal PayPal version. Now to try out this new functionality, let's first create another test account to be the buyer this time. So we'll just give them a new name here, call them buyer. 
And uh, let's give him a lot of money here. Uh, there we go. And now our buyer is created, so let's use this account to test out our shopping cart functionality. So now going to our application, uh, let's try checking out, but if you look at the uh, status bar down below, you can see it's now going to the PayPal uh, site and with a very long URL with all the line item information in there. Now if this length of the URL concerns you, you might want to use a form instead with hidden fields for all the PayPal variables, but here let's just try this out. And once we click that checkout link, it brings us to our PayPal page where we have our cart with all of our line items inside of it passed in and we can enter in either a credit card number so the user doesn't have to have a PayPal account if they don't ha have one they can still check out or if they do have a PayPal account they could just enter in their information here we'll just enter in the buyers username and password and that brings us to the confirmation screen which looks good so let's just choose pay now and there we go now our order has been placed so we can just return back to our store if we want to and that brings us back to our main store page. But now let's see what happens if we add another item to our cart. Uh-oh, you can see that our old items are still in our cart. So our cart never got cleared once we successfully made the purchase on PayPal. So how do we get PayPal to notify us when the purchase has been completed? Well, this in itself is a pretty big topic. So what I'm going to do is leave this episode off now and continue this topic in the next episode in this series and see how we can get notifications from PayPal and act accordingly upon them. This episode is sponsored by Pragmatic Screencasts. There you will find high-quality screencasts on a variety of subjects, including Ruby and Rails. Check them out at pragmatic.tv.